Hey everyone, let's take a look at how you can test dynamic content that comes back from an API. We can do this by mocking the API. Let me show you. First of all, I've got UI mode open. And to open UI mode, it's npx playwright test dash dash UI. Now I'm going to go ahead and run my test in UI mode. And this is going to give me this beautiful DOM snapshot over here on the right. And I can see um, everything that was run. So I've got my actions here that I can go through. I've got them split into nice little test steps just to separate them out. So you can see all my headings that I'm testing. And then I've got the movie details. And I go through the movie details and check that the genres are there, uh, the text is there, then the language and duration of the movie is there. So all those things are not going to change, right? The movie duration is not going to change. The title of the movie is not going to change. But what's going to change is the star rating. So this star rating here um, is just highlighted there, 7.2. Let's pop that out into the DOM snapshot so we can see. Um, so this one here is the dynamic content that's going to change. Now I can go to my source code so you can see um, what's going on here. And I basically am just expecting the movie get by label rating value to have the text 7.2. And up at the top of my code here, what I'm doing is I'm using mocking. I'm basically saying await page dot root anything that has uh, this one here, which is the, the movie ID. So when we go to the root of this movie ID, I want the response to be the fetch. I want to go and get the API, all the results from the fetch. And then I want the JSON to be the response.json. But then I want to say wherever JSON vote average is, I want to change the vote average to be 7.2. Now, 7.2 is that same number that I'm mocking, but I'm just basically ensuring that if it changes on the API and tomorrow it's 8, that my test is not going to fail because I'm going to be mocking it to 7.2 and then I'm going to be expecting it to be 7.2. Now, let me show you how that works. I'm going to just click this button here so I can open my test in VS Code. And let's go ahead and change the JSON. Let's say I want to mock, and I'm just going to put 9, for example, right? Now I can go and save that. I can go back to UI mode. Now, I didn't press the eye icon, so I'm going to press it this time. So each time it's going to run, instead of me having to click um, every time I want it to run. So now I'm running this test, and you can see that this test is going to fail. And there we go, it did. And you can see it's highlighted there. And I'm basically saying um, I was expecting 7.2, and I received 9. And you can even like pop that out to the top snapshot, and you can see 9. It's, it's got this little thing over it because it's a. Uh, am highlighting it here. If I was to click on this one here just to see it easier, we'll pop that out, and we've got 9 stars, OK? Cool. So let's go and if you're not sure of what just happened there, let's go and check that again. Let's go and say and fix the test first of all, right? So we'll go down here and we're going to expect this to have nine. And if I press save, the test is going to run again because I've already got watch mode pressed. And you can see that all ran, no errors, everything passed, happy days. Let's go make it fail again just so you can see what's going on. Um, it's going to expect it to have text nine. And let's put vote average, I don't know, let's put six, for example. Let's save that. We're going to run that. The test is running again because watch mode is clicked. And you can see it's kind of still running here. It's not finished. And bang, there we go. It finished with one error, expected nine, and got six. OK, let's take a look at the network tab so we can kind of see what's going on here as well. So in here, I can um, filter the network. I'm going to filter by the fetch. And we can see we have the fulfilled and we have the API. So I can go to the fulfilled one here. And let's have a look at the response, the body. And you can see fulfilled is 6. That's what we put, right? And if I go to the actual API, it's 7.2. So you can see the difference in there. And again, let's just, you know, just so you can see what I'm doing, let's change this to 10. Um, we'll go back. Our test is going to run again. It's going to fail again. Uh, but my body response, uh, 7.2 for the fulfilled one. Let's close it again so you can see for the API one and the fulfilled one. Let's open the body and we got 10. So we're mocking that value, right? Everything else is the same. So that's how we can uh, see what's coming from our API from and our end are fulfilled. And as you can see, my one error, expected nine. I got 10, 
all a mess. And let's go and fix that test once and for all. So let's go back to VS Code and let's, I don't know, we can go back to 7.02 we want to. And we just have to make sure that this is also 7.02. And let's press save. And this is going to run and it's going to pass. And there we go. And let's pop that out into the DOM snapshot so you can see 7.02 and happy days. And that is how you will mock some content that's coming back that's dynamic that you don't have control over. Everything else is static. You just want to mock that one little thing. That's how you do it. And uh, that's it. Happy testing. See you in the next video.